Every level of the minor leagues played a full week last week, and that means we can name a prospect team of the week. Let's talk about it. You are Locked On MLB Prospects, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on in to Locked On MLB Prospects, your home for all things minor league baseball. I'm your host, Lindsey Crosby, editor-in-chief of Bravestoday.com, freelance baseball writer and podcaster. And thank you for making this your first listen every single day. We're proudly part of the Locked On Podcast Network, and today's episode is made possible by our friends at FanDuel. The FanDuel Sportsbook is the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started today. So now that we have a full week for every minor league in the books, we are going to start doing this weekly with a prospect team of the week, picking the best players at uh, each position on the diamond. Two starting pitchers, we'll pick a righty and a lefty, and then we'll pick obviously three outfielders, uh, first, second, short, third, and catcher. So I want to start off with the pitching because it's always nice to see guys who have been injured and or have made changes and be able to surprise us early in the year. And we definitely were surprised by Oakland Athletics right-hand pitching prospect Mason Miller. 2021 third rounder out of Gardner-Webb. Pitched briefly in 2021, like the complex league. Missed almost all of 2022. He got... Uh, 16 innings in total late in the year because of a shoulder strain. So like he started, he he had a start a two inning start in rookie ball. He pitched three games in high A and he pitched uh, two games in Las Vegas. So the stats for last year, very small sample size and they aren't that impressive. Six games, three eight six ERA and 14 innings, 25 strikeouts, 16.1 per nine is ridiculous. Two three walks, 1.9 per nine, three home runs allowed. Well, he goes out against the Saint, uh, the Salt Lake Bees, uh, pitching for Triple A Las Vegas for the Aviators. Five innings pitched, no hits, no runs, no walks, eleven strikeouts. Uh, the only runner that reached base was either a drop strike or a wild pitch on a strikeout. Like, that's the only person that even reached base against Mason Miller. Uh, it's It was absurd. He struck out the side twice in the outing. He had a 42% CSW, so that's called strikes plus whiffs. Uh, and of his 20 swinging strikes that he got in the outing, 15 were on the fastball, 3 on the slider, and 2 on the cutter, which he didn't really use uh, uh, last year as he was rehabbing from the shoulder. So... The stuff here, the fastball, 70 grade, it averaged 99.9 miles an hour in the outing, touched 102. The slider sits in the mid to upper 80s. It's a sweeper. Uh, it can uh, he, he can throw it to both sides of the plate, and when he needs to, he can land it for a strike. So he's got good control of it as well. And the cutter is... One of, if not the hardest cutters in minor league baseball. Came on about 96 in the outing. I'd call it a plus pitch as well. Uh, I absolutely think he right now could pitch in a major league bullpen. He has a changeup. Uh, it is, he's got to work on it. I don't think he threw any in the outing. I'm trying to, I'm trying to find the notes. I don't think he threw any in the outing. But Mason Miller looked absolutely fantastic. And for a guy that we've seen very, very little of, Again, he got six innings in Complex League in 21 and then missed almost all of last year. This is a guy that's in AAA. Uh, He has a little bit of effort in the delivery, but it's kind of simple, not a lot of moving parts. Feels like he can, you know, he pounds the zone pretty well. Uh, Probably need to see a little bit more of a track record of being able to maintain pitching every five days, maintain the velocity, go deeper into starts, but... Absolutely a guy that you can see Oakland calling up this year. And he's been a ranked prospect, but like we've never talked about him because we haven't really seen him. Just kind of came out of nowhere. He gets the uh, the right-handed spot in the prospect team of the week. 
the left-handed spot goes to Andrew Abbott of the Cincinnati Reds. 2021 second rounder out of Virginia. And last year, got 25 starts, uh, 24 of those, I'm sorry, 25 appearances, 24 of those were starts. And this was divided between high A and double A Chattanooga, but mostly in double A Chattanooga. 381 ERA in 118 innings, 159 strikeouts, 12.1 per nine, 248 walks, 3.7 per nine, and eight home runs allowed. He goes out against the Mississippi Braves and looks absolutely untouchable. Six innings, two hits, no runs, no walks, 14 strikeouts. There were only six balls put into play against Andrew Abbott. Uh, Four fly balls, two ground balls. The only base runners were a pair of singles. He struck out the final six batters he faced. Just absolutely absurd outing from Andrew Abbott. This is actually uh, credit to, I believe it was Baseball America for finding the stat. It was only the ninth time in the last 10 seasons that a minor leaguer had 14 or more strikeouts with no walks, no runs, and two or less hits. Only the ninth time it's happened in the last 10 years. And the book on Andrew Abbott was he had a fast, it was fastball slider needed to work on that third pitch. So the fastball was kind of seen as average sitting lower 90s. It was easily sitting mid-90s, 95. I'd probably call it an above-average pitch right now. Uh, The slider was seen as an above-average pitch in the lower to mid-80s. He's he's increased the velocity up to mid-80s. He's added some sweep to it. It's not a true sweeper, but he's added some sweep to it. And so I think it's a plus pitch now. Still needs to improve the changeup. Still has some work to do on the changeup. But just the control, noticeably better than what he did last year. Again, 3.7 walks per nine last year. And most of his time being double A Chattanooga, 20 of his 24 starts were there. And he actually had four walks per nine in double A. So his numbers were brought down by the success in high A Dayton. So looks like another very good pitching prospect in this Reds organization. We've seen Nick Lodolo. We've seen Graham Ashcraft. We've seen Hunter Green. It looks like Andrew Abbott is going to be able to join them, I would assume, this year since he is back at Double A and he is answering a lot of the questions we had at the end of last year about uh, the control. And then we just kind of need to see that third pitch because, again, you can make it happen with two. Spencer Strider has done that, but. I don't necessarily think that that's a realistic model for a lot of other organizations to try to emulate. So the left-handed pitching prospect in uh, in the prospect team of the week is Andrew Abbott of the Cincinnati Reds. In just a minute, let's get to the infield. I've got a, 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 a couple top prospects in here and a couple unranked guys. But first, today's episode is brought to you by our friends at eBay Motors. For a championship team, it's all about making sure every player is a perfect fit. It's the same when it comes to your vehicle. Every part needs to fit just right. So next time you need parts and accessories, head to eBay Motors. With eBay's guaranteed fit, you can be sure every part you need fits right the first time around. Just add your ride to My Garage and look for the green check to know the part will fit or your money back. Because just like in sports, confidence is the name of the game when you shop on eBay Motors. And with over 122 million parts to choose from, you'll be back in the game in no time. After all, it's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. So get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices on ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. Eligible items only. Exclusions do apply. Thanks for making Locked on MLB Prospects your first listen every single day. For the everydayers, tomorrow on the show, we are talking about potential breakout arms of 2023. There's a couple different write-ups across the internet naming different guys. I had my own list as well. We're going to kind of dive into that and figure out uh, who you should be watching for, not only from a fantasy standpoint, but also from a real-life interest in your team standpoint. So looking at the infield here, a uh, couple different, some ranked guys, some non-ranked guys, uh, I was this close to shortstop Mason Wynn of the Cardinals being in the shortstop spot. He had six games in AAA for the Memphis Redbirds. I believe they played the Gwinnett Stripers, Braves affiliate. 
Uh, 10 to 30, a home run, two doubles, five runs, five RBIs, uh, no walks to six strikeouts, and four or four on stolen bases. But I ended up giving the spot to Mariners shortstop Cole Young, member of the Modesto Nuts. We've got a couple of Modesto Nuts fans who are passionate about this show, one of our everydayers. Shout out to you, Anthony. Uh, but 2022 first rounder last year for Cole Young. Very small sample size of what he did. He got 17 games between rookie ball and A ball. 367, 423, 517. So there's that 345 slash line, but with the caveat of we only got 17 games total. Two home runs, four extra base hits, eight walks to eight strikeouts, and four or six on stolen bases. Uh, again, small sample size. It's a weeks of performance, but versus the San Jose Giants, as a member of the Modesto Nuts, Cole Young played six games, went nine for 21, no home runs, hit six doubles last week, scored six runs, two RBIs, seven walks to three strikeouts, and four of five on stolen bases. And the thing here, Cole Young is one of the top prospects in this system. Part of that is we've seen the Mariners make some trades to acquire pieces, whether it was Luis Castillo, you know, different things like that. And so he's someone where rather young, was a prep draftee last year, had a commitment, I think, to Duke. And so they they went over slot, paid about three and a half million dollars to get him. But absolutely a pure hitter. I've got a plus grade on it. I think it could possibly be higher than that. It's something where Left-handed hitter, we've seen him really well uh, handle velocity. He can handle high velocity. He can handle elite spin. We've seen him be able to kind of sit back, wait on on a breaking ball. Uh, we've seen him be able to, to wait on an off speed, not get fooled by the velocity change, and can absolutely just find, uh, catch a barrel almost every time he goes up to plate, uh, goes up to the plate. Really good with, with controlling the strike zone. The questions I have, is the overall power ceiling, right? Uh, a lot of the scouting reports at the end of last season and in the preseason kind of had him as a uh, 45, like a fringy to average power hitter. He did get a batting practice at T-Mobile Park uh, after the draft, and he sent one like 20 rows deep. But it's definitely one of those, he's going to have to pick and choose his moments, kind of like that Yankees thing of hit strikes hard. He's going to have to pick and choose the moments of when to of when he can sell out for power if he wants to hit, you know, 15 or, or 20 home runs. I kind of see him as more of a 10, 15 home run guy projecting forward to the bigs. Now, a lot of this does depend on the physical development. He is only 19 years old in Modesto this year. Uh, and it's something where right now I've got him as an average defender, speeds above average, arms above average. You do have a little bit of question about as he physically develops the muscle, what happens to the speed? Does he move ha- have to move off of short? If he does, I think he could go either direction. The arm is good enough to play third base. The hands are quick enough and smooth enough to go to second base. So he's got options. But very curious to see how Cole Young develops. Obviously a couple years away from the bigs. But uh, great start to his 2023 year. Uh, the... The first baseman on this team, Matt Mervis of the Chicago Cubs organization. Uh, In AAA, we've had this conversation multiple times about Eric Hosmer and Trey Mancini are blocking him. They're not doing that well. And so he only played in four games last year, uh, last week. Six to 13, a home run, two doubles, seven runs, two RBIs, six walks to two strikeouts. Looked very good in those four games that he played. Had a couple other options here, but a lot of them were not full-time first basemen. Dominic Keegan of the Rays is a catcher who played some first base last week. Heston Kearside of the Orioles is an outfielder who played some first base last week, but we wanted to give it to Matt Mervis. Felt good about that. Second baseman Coco Montes of the San Diego Padres got six games last week. 11 of 26, three home runs, four doubles, and a triple. So... Of the 11 hits, eight were for extra bases. It's absurd. Uh, Six runs, 12 RBIs, three walks to nine strikeouts, and 0 for 1 on stolen bases. Uh, The catcher, Braxton Fulford of the Colorado Rockies. Uh, 2021 sixth rounder out of Texas Tech. Not in a lot of the prospect rankings. A couple of these guys are not uh, here in the infield. 
but uh, seen very much as a kind of a defensive specialist, and the offense picked up a little bit. So 104 games in low A last year to kind of explain the how defensively focused he is. Uh, got this time, again, in low A as a college draftee. 268, 380, 448. 15 home runs, 34 extra base hits, 51 walks to 92 strikeouts, and 13 of 15 on stolen bases. The issues you have for Braxton Fulford, and the reason he may end up being a number two catcher versus a number one catcher, is the power's only kind of average, and specifically, he seems to struggle with uh, spin. Sliders away is a big thing that kind of got to him last year. And so, and, and even in college, I don't think he he bat any higher than 260 or 270, even in college, over like 500 at-bats. He was one of those four-year guys at Texas Tech. So, very much feels like you're looking at a defensive first guy. I do think the arm is plus, the receiving, the blocking, the framing, all of that's at least above average. Feels like it's going to be, he has a chance to make the bigs because you need good defenders at, uh, behind the plate as your backups. Just not quite sure how the power is going to come in and the, the the overall hit tool to bring him high enough to be an MLB regular. But, got five games last week uh, competing against the Eugene Emeralds in high A. 9 of 17, two home runs, a double, four runs, uh, four RBIs, three walks to four strikeouts, and one for two on stolen bases. So Braxton Fulford of the Colorado Rockies, the catcher of our prospect team of the week. The, the third baseman... A guy that, another guy, not rated, but I think we could see him as soon as this season in New York, depending on what happens, is third baseman Andres Shaparo of the Yankees. So 2015 IFA, got 71 games last year, was uh, coming off of injury. So some time in rookie ball, some time in A, some time in double A. 296, 375, 92. So, uh... Almost, uh, I mean, just kind of hovering there near that 300, 400, 500 slash line, right? 20 home runs, 37 extra base hits, 25 walks to 58 strikeouts, and 4 of 4 on stolen bases. Really, 2021 was kind of the breakout. He He had struggled up until that point, something where the power was always there, the contact ability was a little bit of questions about that, but broke out in 21, repeated that when he was healthy last year. And versus the Syracuse Mets, where we thought about putting Brett Beatty in here, but he didn't spend the whole week there because he got called up. And probably the last time Brett Beatty's ever going to be a prospect again. So, six games for Andre Shaparo versus the Syracuse Mets. 10 to 24, five home runs, a double, eight runs, seven RBIs, one walk to three strikeouts, and one for one on stolen bases. The story here, and the reason why I think that you'll see him, or you could see him in the bigs as soon as this year, is dependent on what the Yankees do with moving some guys around. They've got uh, Aaron Hicks as a guy that people, the fans want to get rid of. Josh Donaldson and his massive contracts, a guy that the fans want to get rid of. You saw issues last year when Anthony Rizzo got hurt. And they were talking about having to use Oswaldo Cabrera at first base, which kind of felt like a waste of Oswaldo Cabrera's defensive abilities. And so, Chaparro's a guy that started off at third base. He's played first as well. He's not exceptional at either one of them, but he can get by. And so, you combine the fact that he could be your backup at first and third with the fact that he hits lefties really well. So, last year's batting splits... Uh, versus left-handed pitching, he went 400, 460, 911 against left-handed hitters. I think that there is a path. I'm not sure if it's going to happen, but I think there is a path to having Andre Shaparo on the major league roster as a guy who can back up third base, who can back up first base. He can rotate in and get and get play time at third, as well as being a left-handed, like a, a, a platoon bat against lefties. Uh, now, the issue here, not on the 40-man roster, so you've got to figure that out and figure out who you're going to move around to make room for him. But I absolutely do think there is an avenue for Andre Shapar to, 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 to help the Major League roster as soon as this season. In just a minute, I want to talk about the outfield because we had four guys 
that were the finalists for this team and had to narrow it down to three. But first, today's episode is brought to you by our friends with Pro Baseball GM. Super cool game. I've talked about this all the time. My everydayers know all about this, but it is it gives you the chance to be a major league GM. You manage every single strategic aspect of your baseball franchise as you play through multiple seasons and build a dynasty to take your franchise uh, into the, the, the realm of the legendary teams in baseball history. You're responsible for hiring coaches and staff. You're responsible for scouting and drafting players, managing injuries, managing personalities, managing the team finances, dealing with, uh, obviously, free agency, draft, all of that, and then all of the, up, the ups and downs of a season with the morale and everything else that comes along with winning streaks and losing streaks and things like that. And all of this is in a challenging and realistic game world. Completely free. It's playable offline. You can play on the go as much as you want, when you want. There's no real life restrictions on the time. You can create leagues with your friends. We have one with the other Locked On MLB hosts. So it's incredibly fun to sit there and like make fun of somebody for a losing streak. Or, hey, Brett from Locked On Astros got fired. So we all gave him a hard time about that. That was fun. Uh, but Locked On MLB Prospects listeners get a 100% free boost to their franchise when using the promo code Locked On in the game store. So make sure to check it out. To download the game, visit ProBaseballGM.com. If you're on YouTube, scan the code on the screen or look it up on the app store. It's ProBaseballGM.com for the ultimate Pro Baseball GM app. Start your dynasty today. Okay, looking at the outfield for the prospect team of the week, we've narrowed it down to four players. Outfielder Owen Casey of the Chicago Cubs. Outfielder Evan Carter of the Texas Rangers. Outfielder Andy Pajes of the Los Angeles Dodgers. And outfielder Peyton Burdick of the Miami Marlins. So here's what these guys did. Andy Pajes is one of the ones that was a lock to me. Six games uh, in in AA for Los Angeles uh, last week. Eight of 18, two home runs, two doubles. So half of his hits were for extra bases. Eight runs, 10 RBIs. Eight walks to four strikeouts and one for one on stolen bases. He was somebody that I wondered, would he be able to contend for a job out of spring training? Was a little bit early for that. Plus, they've gotten good returns from Trace Thompson, Jason Hayward, who they signed as an on-roster invitee. But absolutely a guy who I initially was given a stylistic comparison on Andy Pajes to Yasiel Puig. As far as a power hitting right fielder with a big but inaccurate arm. I feel like his hit tool's gotten better. His arm accuracy has gotten better. And I think he probably now has one of the higher ceilings for outfielders in that Dodger system. So very excited about Andy Pajes. He was a no doubt slam dunk for the list. Owen Casey of the Chicago Cubs. Uh, also a, 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 a no doubt for the list. 2020 second rounder out of high school by the Padres was moved in a deal because the Padres moved so many prospects and deals. Got 105 games in high A last year. 254, 349, 402. 11 home runs, 33 extra base hits, 50 walks to 124 strikeouts in 105 games, so more than once a game, and 11 to 17 on stolen bases. He played Montgomery, the Montgomery Biscuits in double A last week. And I was there for one of these games. Uh, We were there in person scouting. I wanted to see him. I wanted to see Pete Crow Armstrong, a bunch of other guys. But six games for the week, seven of 21, four home runs, a double, a triple, five runs scored, nine RBIs, a walk to 12 strikeouts, no stolen base attempts. The game that I was there for, he hit three home runs. First inning grand slam, I was down in the camera well, like right next to the the home dugout. And that, the crack of the bat, I legitimately jumped. I have never, like in in person, seen a ball hit that hard and that loudly in my time watching prospects. Now, part of that was I was incredibly close to the field. I was literally right behind the little little wall there. But my goodness, destroyed a ball. And it was, the big thing here was he had the power, but the swing was kind of long. And so he struggled to always get it into games. Well, friends, he has fixed that. Uh, the swing is a little more compact now. A lot of the the different prospect apparatus had him as like an average hit tool. 
and a, a an above average power tool. I, it's small. It's a small observation, but from what I saw of the swing and how like, how he shortened it, how he's quicker into the zone, how the bat lingers longer there, I really want to upgrade it to a 55 hit tool and probably a 60 power tool. He's listed at 6'4", 190. Looks like he added a little bit of strength to that. And so was very impressed with Owen Casey, what I saw. Uh, you're going to have a problem in Chicago in the future in the outfield because you have Seiya Suzuki signed long-term. You just signed Ian Hop long-term. You've got Pete Crow Armstrong on the way. You've got Owen Casey on the way. Brennan Davis is there somewhere. Unless you're willing to move one of the guys already up at the bigs or you just don't expect these these out these top three outfielders to all make it, you're going to have a log jam. I think if you move somebody, Ian Hop feels like the guy you'll probably move because there's some cost certainty to that. But it's still just, uh, it's a good problem to have. Depth will always work itself out. But Owen Casey's the second guy on the list. The third guy on the prospect team of the week, we had to decide between Evan Carter of the Rangers and Peyton Burdick of the Miami Marlins. I gave it to Carter because of his time playing center field last week. He had more time actually in center, and to me, that was the tiebreaker. He played, of the six games, four in center, one in right, and one is the DH. He went 10 of 23 in those games, three home runs, a double, four runs, and 11 RBIs, seven walks to eight strikeouts, one for two on stolen bases. By contrast, Peyton Burdick, who was a 2019 third rounder out of Wright State, uh, was called up last year, played a little bit of time in the bigs last year. So I guess that was kind of a, maybe a knock against him was I was like, you know, Carter's still a prospect. Burdick's a prospect, but uh, Carter hasn't had a taste of major league action yet. Uh, Burdick played one game in center, two in left, two in right, and one is the DH. Very versatile guy, but in those six games, 10 of 22, three home runs, one double, seven runs to five RBIs, six walks to eight strikeouts, and two for two on stolen bases. Either way, great performances from both of these guys. Very excited to see what they continue to do as Carter tries to make his way to the bigs, as Burdick tries to make his way back to the bigs to hopefully be able to help out Miami at the major league level. Reminder, if you have questions for Monday's mailbag, I'm on Twitter at Crossy Baseball, shows on Twitter at Locked on Farm. You can email us, lockedinamovieprospects at gmail.com or Drop your questions in the Locked Into Movie Prospects Discord. Links in the episode description. Links in the show notes. Excited to talk to my everydayers about the potential breakout arms for 2023 tomorrow. But until then, remember, it's always a great time to pay a minor leaguer.